Okay, I think we will get started. Uh, welcome to Learning in the Making Live. This is a weekly video series where we are bringing you at home some hands-on learning activities that you can do anywhere with materials that you have at home. My name is Dora and I am from Maker Ed. Just to let you know, um, Maker Ed is a national nonprofit uh, located in the Bay Area, and our mission is to harness the potential of making to transform teaching and learning. Especially now during this time, we're turning to more remote education and more distance learning. We still believe that hands-on making is a vehicle for learning, for building community, and for bringing some joy to our lives. So that's why over the past couple of weeks, we've been working on bringing you a lot of different resources, inspiration, activities for hands-on learning that you can do at home. Um, in the past couple of weeks, if you've missed some of our episodes, we have done some really cool things. We did a shoe design challenge where you learned about the design process by building your own shoes. We learned how to process and cope with some of our thoughts and emotions and feelings by making zines. We learned all about math through cooking pancakes. So we learned about fractions and measurements. We made our own instruments to learn about sounds and make some rhythms. And last week, we also made some stuffed creatures by using some old socks or fabric to sew a cozy, friendly um, animal. So if you missed any of those episodes, please check them out on our YouTube page, or you can go to our website and look at all of the different projects that we've had for you over the last couple of weeks. Um, so check that out after this activity, because this week we have a brand new theme for you. Um, and... I also have some really amazing guest educators here today um, who are joining us. If you can introduce yourselves. Hi, everyone. Uh, my name is Raina Hamilton. I'm the manager of school programs over at UC Berkeley's oh, Lawrence Hall of Science. Hi, everyone. We're so happy to be here. Thank you for having us, Dora. My name is Cassia, and I'm an early childhood science specialist at UC Berkeley's Lawrence Hall of Science too. Thank you so much for being here with us today. The Lawrence Hall of Science is an amazing public science center and hands-on interactive museum located in the Bay Area. And they are also doing a lot of really amazing at-home activities and building resources for those of us at home. So you should definitely check them out. Their links are in the description below, so click on those later. But this week's theme is called Shapes in Nature. Uh, Cassia, can you tell us what this theme is all about? Sure, Dora. Uh, we're thinking it, it would be so much fun to start by uh, taking a look at some shapes animals use to build their shelters outdoors. Um, that might get us inspired to then build a shelter for your favorite stuffed animal. So if you are watching this recording, please feel free to pause and go get your favorite stuffy. What do you think? Do you think it's a good idea? How does that sound? That sounds great. This sounds like it's gonna be a lot of fun. For those of you who are watching at home, this will be a really cool math and engineering lesson that you can follow along with. We're gonna kind of walk you through the lesson so that you can continue the project continue doing the project after the video. If you are an educator or if you're a parent, you can use this video as inspiration for ideas and activities that you can do with your kids at home. So thank you again so much for being here with us today. Let us get started. Awesome, Dora. So um, how about if we get started by playing a game where we will observe six different shapes found in nature. So uh, let's see, I'm going to give you a clue of what shape I'm looking at to see if you can guess, okay? So listen up, I spy a shape that seems round when I first look at it. But as I look again, it reminds me of an entrance that has four sides. What picture am I looking at, Dora? Hmm, a picture that looks like an entrance with four sides. I would think that you're looking at the cave because the cave reminds me of a square because a square has four sides. Very close observation, Dora. Why don't you go next? 
Okay, um, I spy a shape that looks very round, but it's not elongated. It's just round. What picture do you think I'm looking at, Raina? Hmm, let me look closely. So it sounds like you're probably looking at the nest with the eggs in it. So the nest looks round. That reminds me of a circle. Perfect. Yes. Very clear description. Yes. Thank you. Okay. Let's see. I spy a shape that has one, two, three, four, five, six sides. It reminds me of a stop sign. What picture do you think I'm looking at? Oh, okay. Six sides. I know the word for six sides is a hexagon. And the beehive looks like it has six sides in those little holes. So I think it's the beehive. Yes, exactly. Okay, I want, I want to do another one. Um, I spy a really strong, long, and kind of round shape. So strong, long, and I see it's kind of round. Dora, can you guess what I'm looking at? Hmm, I'm thinking that it might be the bamboo and the tree trunks. And they're very long and strong, kind of like cylinders. So that it's it's, the cylinders. Exactly. Hmm. So I'm looking at all of these shapes. Cassia, is there something interesting that you notice about all of these shapes in nature? I'm glad you asked, Brena, because I was just noticing how shelters can have different shapes and how animals choose some shapes over others. I you know, that made me wonder why that is. Hmm. Yeah, I noticed that each of these shapes in nature is a math shape. So we have hexagons, circles, cylinders, and squares. And I noticed that animals, when they build their own shelters, they probably have to use a lot of different shapes to build them. And so I think that that's something that we can explore, like what shapes do animals use and why to make their shelters. Um, so I think that we can use that idea to start building. What do you think? I, I think that's a great idea. Let's do it. All but right. wait, 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 wait a minute, wait a minute. Oh, okay. We are building a shelter. Hmm? What, what, what is a shelter for anyways? Oh, that is a really good question. What is a shelter for? Um, I think maybe a shelter can keep an animal out of the rain or something. What do you think, Rena? Oh, definitely. That shelter can protect animals by giving them somewhere to feel safe. Hmm. I think it would be really cool to build a shelter for my pet dog named Oliver. Oliver, come here. Oliver. Maybe Oliver will pop into the screen. <laughs> um, Oliver likes to find places to hide and to relax with his favorite toys and snacks. Dora, who are you going to build a shelter for? Well, hopefully we can get Oliver to show up on screen because I'm super excited to see your beautiful dog, Oliver. But if I was to build a shelter, then I would probably build it for my favorite stuffed animal, which is a Triceratops. This is going to be my son's first stuffed toy. Um, and I'm going to build it for him because he likes to run out around and play outside. But in the Bay Area, when it gets kind of foggy and cold and rainy, he needs somewhere to like be protected. So I think I have to build a shelter to protect him from the rain. Hi, Oliver. Say hi. <laughs> we got to build a shelter for Oliver. Um, what about you, Cassia? What? Why does your toy need a shelter? Okay, that that's that's a, th those two toys are adorable. Actually, the pet dog <laughs> and the toy they're adorable. I have a little bird because I just I love birds and look at Chica. Aww. So Chica needs she definitely needs a bigger and safer space to practice flying. Whee! Let me put her here. See you later, Chica. So let's see what we have for building materials. Okay. I have some, let me show you what I found, newspaper. And tape. And I think maybe I will need scissors later on. 
mine is a big one. You, you can use a safer one. Uh, what do you have, Reina? Oh, um, I have similar things. So I have a pair of scissors in case I need them. I have a few pieces of newspaper that I cut, but I also found like this ad. So I could even cut these out and use these for extra paper. And I have some painter's tape. Wonderful. What store I have? Uh, coincidentally, I also have some newspapers um, and some tape and some scissors. What a coincidence. <laughs> hey, things well, that we have at home. Yes. So if you don't have newspaper, you can use any other kind of paper, magazines, catalogs. Just uh, go to town with paper. Um, okay. Um, now, um, sh now that we have what we need, should we make some paper, paper dowels? <laughs> we should definitely make some paper dowels because dowels are a really fun and easy way to make structures. And if you're watching this video at home, this is also a very, very good way to use all your scrap uh, newspaper and recycled newspapers and paper. I don't know about you, but I get these advertisements in the mail all the time and I put them in my recycling bin and that's really great, but maybe we can just not throw them away and actually use them to learn some math and engineering today. So don't throw your papers away, bring them, make some structures with us. All right, let's, let's get started. Okay, so in order, um, beside, actually besides paper, and tape and sometimes scissors, we will need to use a tool that is round like a cylinder, you know, to help us roll our dowel. So I looked around the house, looked again, and I found, look, a paper towel roll. And I wonder what you have available at home, Dora. Well, I looked around my house and I have a bunch of these paper straws um, and I have so many of these paper straws that I figure I could use them to build some paper dowels, but I cut all of my straws into smaller uh, pieces so that I can make more dowels out of these straws. That's a what really great right way. That's, Dora, I really like how you're cutting them because then you can save your resources and make even more. So this is what I have. Um, I have a metal boba straw. So it's kind of in the middle of all the sizes of, of rollers that you all have. So I'm gonna use my metal boba straw. Okay, great. So let's make paper dowels. I think I, we might have like um, four or five steps. So um, starting with step one, I would grab a piece of paper no, any type that you have. I have newspaper. Um, then once you find the paper, and we're going to take this slowly to give you time, okay? We're going to relax and then learn together. Once you find the paper and the roller, you can place your roller down near a corner of the paper like we're all doing. I think... Um, like Dora, uh, she has a much um, smaller roller than I, I am using. So with a smaller roller, you wanna um, um, cover your roller like that and tape the roller. But with a bigger roller, you don't need to tape the roller down because you wanna make sure it's not nice, it's snugly, it goes in and out because later on you can reuse it. So after you just, you know, cover it like a blanket like that, tape the corner, the tip of the paper. And step number two, you are going to start, actually you're going to be invited to sing a little song when you start rolling. Row, row, row your roller gently, snuggly until you reach the end of the other corner. And step number three, you are going to tape the dowel close. How are you doing over there? Hey, I'm working on it. Okay, take your time. 
Now, once you um, taped it closed and you have a bigger roller, you can remove it gradually. And then you can reuse your roller to roll more dowels. How does that sound? How is hey, everyone doing? Got one down and I'm working on my second one. Hey. It's a little tricky. Okay. I'm cutting mine out because it was. Oh no. Okay, mine just came apart. <laughs> I'm really feeling frustrated. What's going on? I hear you, Raina. I get frustrated sometimes too. That's so normal. It's part of being a human, huh? Um, the thing about getting frustrated is that you can learn so much from those emotions. I learned that by taking a deep breath, it helps me a lot. So should we try that, Raina? On the count of three? Okay. Let's breathe in. Ah. One more time, my friend, please. Breathe in and breathe out. When facing a challenge, it takes patience and a lot of practice to solve it. So let's thank the challenge. Thank you, challenge. And keep on trying. Let's not give up, okay? It's all part of learning. Are you ready to try again, Raina? Okay, I'm thanking the challenge and I'm going to try again. Thanks, Cassia. You're welcome. Okay, so I taped the corner down. I have my roller. You said to gently and snugly roll it, roll it. I forgot your cool song, but it's something like roll it. All right, tape, and ah, it totally worked this time. Thank you, Cassia. You're welcome. Oh, so am I the only one, or is anyone else facing some challenges when making these dowels? How are you doing, Dora? Actually, I was also facing a couple of challenges. Um, you can see my first couple of dowels, they weren't as tight as I wanted them to be. Like they're really thick and kind of like loose. Um, and I got a little bit frustrated too because I wanted them to be like thinner so that they could be stronger. But I realized after Kasia led you through some breathing techniques and we thanked our challenges um, that I just had to be a little bit more patient and roll my straw in my dowel a little bit slower to get the result that I wanted. So that was what I learned in making these dowels. What about you, Kasia? Did you have well, I learned something very similar too when I was um, making mine because it's too big. So the dowel felt a little bit too flimsy. So what I looked at it and I'm like, how can I fix this? Because the paper is so malleable and so easy to work with. I was able to fold it in half. Let me show you. Did Cassia just freeze? Okay, I think Cassia just froze. But I'm pretty sure she was going to show us how to fold the flimsier dowel um, so that it would be stronger and sturdier. You know what, Dora, this really brings like makes me think of something like I got frustrated. It's paper. It's just paper like you can't break it. So I just had an epiphany about that. Exactly, especially if you're just using like old recycled newspaper then it, you could just grab some more, right? So it's just paper. Exactly. Um, so I think Kasia will rejoin us, but maybe we can start building shelters. Great. So what are some maybe things that we need to think about when we're building our shelters? Hmm. So we really need to think about who we're building the shelter for. So you saw Oliver, he had to go get a snack. So here's his picture. But we need to think about our animals or our stuffed animals or whatever we're building our shelter for. So how tall does it need to be? How wide should it be? 
How big should the whole shelter be? So we really need to think about these things. Oh yeah, so if I look at my animal, which is Mr. Triceratops, I notice that he needs a nice tall door so that his horns don't get stuck in the door when he enters the shelter. And I notice that he needs kind of something that's a little bit more wide um, so that he can fit in and out of the shelter. Hi, Costa, exactly. welcome exactly. back. Exactly. I think we got back. I think we got disconnected, sorry. It, it happens, welcome it's back. Technology. <laughs> Technologies. Um, and so where did we, where did we so stop? So in my shelter, so the shelter that I'm thinking about for Oliver, um, and since he went to get a snack, I'm gonna use a model for Oliver, so a little stuffed toy. So I know that Oliver likes to hide and be comfy and have his favorite snacks. So I need to make his shelter big enough for him and for some little puppy snacks. Awesome. Cassia, can you tell us about what you need to build for Chica? Yeah, I, I think I will need to make a wide entrance because of Chica's growing wings. So I wanna make sure they don't get like hurt. <laughs> exactly. So let's, I guess, let's get to work. All um, right. Show us how to do it, Cassia. <laughs> yeah, so notice how each dowel could make the sides of a shape. So just a just few ideas because I practiced a little bit before. So if sometimes you can use, you can just connect to dowels. Not sometimes, yeah, some, th there's one of the ways. You can connect the two dowels by taping, taping them together, okay? To make the two sides. Other times you could just get a longer dowel, long, long, and, and bend it and make two sides. And if it's too long, there comes the scissors. You can just cut it shorter. How does that sound? Are you ready? Yeah, I'm ready. I got my paper and my tape. Great. I'm ready. So I think that I'm going to start with uh, this triangle shape because triangles are my favorite shapes and it's just three sides. So I have three dowels and then I'm going to try to make this a little bit more 3D by uh, using some of my dowels to make like upright structures like this. And hopefully that'll fit my triceratops. What about you, Reina? What's your idea? So I was really, really inspired by the beehive, um, that hexagon shape. So I think I want to make a, make a hexagon, um, but uh, how do I get started? Cassia, do you have any suggestions? Reina, I was thinking um, maybe perhaps you could use, like you, you could choose the size of one dowel, then use that the same dowel since you're you're making a hexagon right yes to, hexagon. to measure the other sides so we're gonna need uh, let's say a let me, let me see, hexagon how many sides i think you're if you if you start with one dowel you can just grab one two three four Five more, so five plus one is six. Six. So if the hexagon has six sides, the same exact length, you should be fine. Okay, thanks for that suggestion. Oh, I think this is gonna be the perfect shelter for all of us. He's gonna love this. And, hmm, I'm, I, I'm kind of like wondering, I'm not sure, I'm gonna test this. I would love to make a, a, an oval, long, round shape for Chica. Oh, your Maybe oval shape trunk. reminds me of the round hole that we saw in the tree trunk during our I Spy um, Shapes of Nature game. It totally does. So I'm starting to think that maybe I want to change my idea. 
Kasi, is that okay? Oh, that's totally fine. Um, Reina, I'm, I'm just curious, what made you change your mind? Because I want to get to know your process. Okay, well, and like at first I thought I wanted a hexagon shape for the base or for the bottom of the shelter. But now I'm starting to think that maybe I want the hexagon shape to be the top. So to build the roof so that I could take the roof off, put the roof back on, put some more toys in Oliver's shelter. Hmm. Yeah, I think I want to change my idea. Wonderful. How, how was the process for you, Dora, making the shelter? Well, so far, this is what I have. Um, I started with a triangle base, and then I was just going to make more triangle structures. But I realized that I couldn't fit my dinosaur in it. Like, my dinosaur was too big for the shelter. So actually, after I heard you talking to Serena about it's okay to change your ideas, I realized that I might just add more triangles and then like a square on top and then make the shelter bigger and wider on the other side. So I appreciated listening to you guys talk about your different process because it helped me realize that it's okay to change your idea. Um, what about you, Raina? Did you have any challenges or did you overcome any challenges during your building? Oh yeah. So my first sense of frustration was in actually making the paper dowels. So I had to overcome that frustration. Thank you, Kasia, for helping me breathe through that. Um, another challenge is that I changed my idea. So that was a great challenge because it allowed me to think a little bit differently and that it's really okay if you change your mind and you change your ideas because you can explore those different ideas and come out a little bit better than you originally thought. So here's the roof with my hexagon for Oliver's shelter. Wonderful. Can I share mine? Of course. Of course. So even though I've been doing this for a while, I kind of like forgot to measure, like Raina had suggested, uh, my little bird's body. And my when I uh, made my first shape, the oval, uh, it wouldn't it wouldn't fit very well. So I made it bigger and then it wasn't so uh, like safe for um, for Chica. So I decided I decided just by, you know, I got inspired by watching you and, sh and listening to to you sharing your experiences. So I'm like, OK, paper is so easy to create with. I started building like Dora triangles around the oval. And I'm very happy with the start of this project because it, the triangles seem to be very um, stable and, and in helping the oval stay in place too. Even when I move the triangles, like if they were flapping their wings. Wow, I love all of the different math and engineering concepts and conversations that we're having because this is such a great way to explore math and engineering concepts using just paper. Um, and it's a great way to recycle all of your paper. So in this video, we've showed you some techniques on how to build newspaper dowels and ideas for the kinds of structures that you can build. I also wanted to share maybe some more inspiration for those of you watching at home on other kinds of structures that you can build. So if you take a look at these, these um, newspaper structures are really popular, really fun and easy engineering activity that teachers and students have done all over the place. So you can look at these students, they have built a structure using squares and triangles. So they have made some 3D shapes. Um, so that might be a good place to start. We are building shelters to fit our toy animals or maybe our real animals like Irina's dog, Oliver but a great extension challenge for you might be to build a structure that can fit you and your family inside of it. That would be a really awesome challenge to see if you can do that. You would need a lot of paper, so save up your papers. 
Um, you can also take this activity outside. So this is a really fun part of just having paper and tape and scissors. You can take it outside and maybe try some new shapes. Like Cassia was explaining that she tried an oval with some triangles. You can also try that. And if you wanna get more complicated, you can build like a giant geodesic dome and see what you can fit inside of there. So those are some ideas and some inspiration for how you can continue doing this activity at home. And we would love, love, love to see the projects that you are doing so that we can share them with others. Um, so if you take a, if you watch this video and you try making some newspaper dowels, please share your projects with us because it's really important for us to see everybody else's ideas. Um, you can share your projects with us at maker at org on Twitter, Instagram, or on Facebook, um, or reach out to us if you have any questions or like wanna just let us know how you're using this idea. Um, and remember that you can take a walk through nature and look closely at all of the shapes that you see in order to get inspired on how animals actually use these shapes in real life. Um, as engineers, when you face a challenge, it takes patience and practice to solve those challenges. So make sure to take a deep breath when you're feeling frustrated, because it's okay to feel frustrated. Um, like Cassia said, thank the challenge because it's helping you grow and get better and stronger. And it's okay to change your ideas as you build because that's how we learn as engineers and mathematicians to build better structures. So if you're changing your idea, that's fine and share your ideas with others to inspire them to build. I got a lot of ideas just listening to Reina and Cassia talk about their structures today. So please share your projects with us. And lastly, have fun. This is a fun activity. It's just paper, so you can't mess it up. It's just paper. Um, so thank you for watching this video with us. Before you go, I'm gonna share a couple of resources for you to keep extending and learning your ideas. Uh, Raina, can you yes. tell us a little bit about what the Lawrence Hall Science is doing? Oh, absolutely. And thank you for sharing all these resources. So friends, please check out our online program, The Lawrence at Home. It's on our YouTube video. We have a collection of videos, things that you can do at home around astronomy, kitchen science. Um, there's some excellent story times. So definitely check out lawrencehallofscience.org. Um, and there's tons of videos and activities and really cool things for you to do at home. Awesome. Thank you so much for sharing that, Reina. Some more activities that you can do, you can check out teachengineering.org and you can look at the physics and geometry behind Strong Shapes. They have a lot of really great lesson plans for you. If you want some more nature inspired activities, then you can visit naturebridge.org. And if you don't want to take a walk around your neighborhood or you live in a place that doesn't, maybe doesn't have a lot of nature outside, then you can visit Nature Bridge for virtual parks. So you can visit parks um, and check out the shapes of nature that you see there. If you do like walking outside and you have a phone, then you can download the iNaturalist app. This is a really great way to explore and share your observations with others. You can take pictures of flowers or insects or animals um, and post them and share and identify those flowers or animals. I know in my neighborhood, we have a lot of wild turkeys. So people will take pictures of the turkeys and track where they're going and talk about them. So that's a great way to explore nature. And lastly, um, Maker at Home, we have so many videos and resources for you. Um, if you're looking for more videos or events that you want to attend, like other webinars, other maker activities, then you can also check out our events calendar on our website. Um, and if you are the kind of person that likes to print out these project guides, or if you're a parent and you want to print them out, um, to do this activity with your kids or send them to your students, then you can also download all of our project guides on our website. They are available in English and Spanish. So please check those out. Thank you all so much for joining us. Um, I think the three of us will finish building our newspaper structures um, and see where those take us. But this is part one of a two part video series. So Kasia, can you tell us what part two is gonna be about? Sure. So we hope you join us again next week for part two of this series. Uh, I believe Dora, Reina, and I will be back and uh, we'll start building like small and grow bigger. And so we can really imagine building like humongous, sturdy, freestanding structure. 
And then, this is the cool part. We are going to test our humongous <laughs> structures to see how much weight they can hold before falling down. Okay? That sounds like so much fun. So make sure if you do this activity, post your pictures, um, check it out, share your project with us, and then join us for part two next week. So thank you again so much. I'm going to finish building my structure. So I have something to share next week. Um, but as always, we'll be learning in the making. Yay. Okay. Bye. Bye. Bye.